So welcome back. We stopped at um, transitional epithelium. So it's also called uroepithelium. And this epithelium is found in the urinary tract. So either the ureters, the urinary bladder, or the urethra. So how is this epithelium adapted for function? It's stretchable, expansile, and waterproof. So you're um, not going to leak um, urine into the you know, the substance of other tissues. So you're able to maintain urine within the, the urinary tract. Now, how do you characterize this transitional epithelium? You have four to five cell layers where the surface cells are umbrella shaped or dome shaped, okay? So they tend to form a curve. The intermediate cells are polygonal while the basal cells are cuboidal in shape, as tall as they are wide. So four to five cell layers. And that just shows you the diagram. You can see the pictures. The surface cells are dome-shaped, OK? Dome-shaped, umbrella-shaped. And then the intermediate layers are polygonal. Then if you to look at the nuclei of the cells at the uh, basal surfaces, they are cuboidal in shape. So if this is your urinary bladder, these dome-shaped are the ones that are lining the bladder inside. So when your bladder is full, yeah, completely full, these dome-shaped are able to stretch so that you can accommodate more urine. So the more the bladder is filling, the more the cells are able to um, stretch. That's why we say they are stretchable and expansive. So transitional epithelium in the ureter, urethra and um, urinary bladder. So all those we were discussing were lining epithelium. Now we go to glandular epithelium. What is a gland? A gland is a collection of cells. So it could be one cell or more cells that secrete a particular product. And in most cases, it's usually what we call a hormone. Yeah? So um, it could be hormone or it could be other secretions from um, exocrine glands. So we have two types of glands, endocrine and exocrine. Exocrine have ducts. Okay, so you empty secretions through ducts. Good examples are sweat glands, oil glands, salivary glands. Those are exocrine glands and parts of the, of the pancreas. Then we also have endocrine glands. These are ductless and they commonly produce hormone. Good examples are hypothalamus and pituitary in your brain. You have thyroid and parathyroid in the neck. Then you also have other endocrine glands like the testes and the ovaries. So how do you classify glands? So the exocrine um, glands, we've already named the examples, they secrete through ducts, while endocrine, they directly secrete into the blood vessels, into the capillaries, okay? So you can see like this is a thyroid gland, these are the thyroid follicles, and you have capillaries around the follicular cells. So thyroid gland is an endocrine gland. Secretions will leave the cell directly into the capillaries. So endocrine are ductless glands. So how do you classify exocrine glands? You can classify based on the branching of the ducts or based on the shape of the secretory portion. So a simple gland only has one duct that is unbranched. If it's compound, there is a complex branching of the ducts of the gland. Then if you're to look at the secretory portion, look at the shape. If it's shaped like a tube, that's a tubular gland. If it's round or flask shaped, like looking like sacs, you call that alveola or acina. And then if you have both tubes and alveola, we call it tubular alveolar gland, okay? So if you're to look at this, you need to know the examples because you can bring in your MCQ or we can ask you to match which one is tubular gland, which one is simple alveolar, which one is compound tubular alveolar. So look at this simple one duct, it's not branching. So and it's secretory portion is tubular. So simple tubular, good example intestinal glands. Simple branched tubular. There's some branching, but it's not complex. Okay, and secretory portion is tubular. Good example, the gastric glands in the stomach. Simple, no branching of the duct, alveolar, looking like rounded acina, simple alveolar. Okay, then you have simple branched alveolar you have compound tubular like in kidneys and testes compound alveolar like in mammary glands and compound tubular alveolar you have both tubules and alveolar shapes lastly the mode of secretion of glands you can classify glands based on modes of secretion merocrine release their substances by exocytosis without altering the gland good examples are sweat glands and salivary glands 
Then you have holocrine. These ones, they rupture the gland and destroy the cell. So everything is disintegrated. The cell is disintegrated, like sebaceous glands. Okay? Then apocrine, you will extrude the components of the gland and destroy the apices of the cell. Merocrine did not alter the gland. Holocrine destroyed the gland, while apocrine destroyed only the apices. Thank you.